Since starting Mechanic Mindset, I've had lots of questions on the YouTube channel about what I use for wiring diagrams. And today I'm gonna to share with you the platform that I chose, three things I love about it, and some tips that are gonna help you make the most of this platform. So after being in the manufacturer dealer world for over 20 years in the technical department, um, I've been really quite used to a high level of support regarding workshop information and wiring diagrams. So since last year, when I uh, took the dive into the independent world, I've been asking technicians on all of my training courses which platform they use for uh, wiring diagrams. And the same names keep popping up, so I'd always asked why they use it or what they really like about it. And there's one platform that really stood out for me, and that was All Data. And why? Because they only supply data directly from manufacturers. Plus, there's one problem with the generic sites, and I'm not gonna name them because it's not about how bad they are. There's positives and negatives about all the different platforms out there. But in my experience, what I noticed is that what they were good at is providing a consistent diagram for every vehicle. So if you log in and looked at a Mini, you'd get a diagram that looked the same as the diagram on the Audi. However, one of the problems with that is that the generic sites don't tend to carry over some of that real detailed information like what does that wire do, DIN numbers, signal lines, sometimes even wire colours. You might also struggle for finding detailed diagrams on Canvas as well. Not with all data. Let's check it out. So the first thing I want to show you is the wiring diagrams. This is the uh, screen that you get uh, welcomed with once you log in. So I'm just going to uh, skip to one of the vehicles that we've got saved here. And what I'm going to do is go into the wiring diagrams kind of the manual way. You can search up here, and I'm gonna show you that search feature later on. It's really quite good. So what we're gonna do is go to diagrams, uh, electrical OE, and these numbers here are how many kind of hits or files are in that area. And we wanna to go to exterior lighting. So lighting and horns, LED lights from 2016. Okay, so I'm just getting this wiring diagram up straight away here. What you'll notice is that it, it seems, you know, kind of all the way over to this side. And we have got this uh, zoom feature here, which we'll, we'll be using as well. I was actually using all data for a few months before uh, Rob, one of our students, pointed out to me, just click that button there and it gets rid of that related information window. So now we've got much more space for the diagram itself. So one of the challenges that all data faces when putting diagrams on here is that all of these manufacturers, they publish diagrams in different formats. So what all data have had to do is come up with a solution to display all of these diagrams on the same platform. And I think they've done a great job. I'm not being paid for this video, by the way. I do pay for my own all data subscription. However, they do have a referral scheme that you can benefit from as well. So for every sign up that we get, um, or referral, we get a month free of uh, all data. And that's only for the UK. So if you're buying in any other regions or countries, just let them know where you found all data. So one of the things I want to show you is the amount of information that you get with a manufacturer's wiring diagram. So um, one of the things is all the wiring diagrams will look slightly different. We are building a wiring diagram training course on Mechanic Mindset in the Diagnostic Coach. So you can check that out in the link below. However, just take a look at this. So here we've got a, a left LED headlight, okay? And if we just zoom in here, okay, we've got the, the headlamp here. Um, these are, of course, grounds, and on Volkswagen diagrams, anything that touches this line at the bottom is basically bolted to chassis ground, so that's, that's what that line represents. However, I was looking at some other diagrams, and the information that was shared was, was really quite basic, to the point where you couldn't even work out what each of these lights were okay so you didn't know which one was the main beam the turn signal the you know dip beam so 
Coming over to this diagram here, first of all, we can see that down the side, there is a description of all of the things on this page. So even for like these connections up here, we've got C68 and that tells us that it's a canvas connection. And then we've also got these earth point connections as well. Now the bulbs, however, if we look here, we've got M29 dipped beam headlight. So that's showed us where that is. Okay, so that's that yellow and black wire here. The colors, there's a legend for the colors down here. So they're German abbreviations for colors. I'm very familiar with them. They were completely drilled into me during my BMW apprenticeship. But something else which is, is pretty cool is you also get the DIN numbers. So you can see here it says T14AF slash six. So that's a 14 pin connector. The pin we're looking at is pin six. And that 56B, that's a DIN number. So you've probably heard of before terminal 30 for a live, terminal 15 for ignition, 31 for ground. They're all DIN numbers and there's a whole list of them. So 56B is actually for uh, the dip beam headlights. And if we look over here, 58, 58 is for side lights. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of information on here that you might not get on a generic uh, diagram. So look, you can see here as well, we've got 15, a terminal 15 there. So that's a, an ignition supply. Quite a lot of information there. So with the Volkswagen diagrams, they tend to publish like that whole system across the pages. And what you need to do is basically follow the wires around. So you can see here, um, this wire is in line with this current flow. So they're called current flow diagrams. So to find out where that wire joins, we would go along to number 52 and we're looking for a box with a number 19 in it. So scroll down. That's 42, and on this one here then, we've got uh, 52 down here, and we can see that that wire goes up there to join there on box 19. So that is a ground that goes up to the J745, which is a cornering light and headlight range control unit. So another nice feature, if there's a diagram that you use quite often, you can, um, fill up your bookmarks. Um, mine's full now, so there's a maximum of 15 bookmarks that you can put in there. Would be great if we could store some more. Um, if we go to the diesel engine, I'm just gonna show you another little feature now. Um, well, let's just get rid of that side bit. Now, this diagram is actually quite large. And if you go all the way to the bottom, look, there are, there are, there are 32 pages shown here on this diagram and 434 uh, current flow tracks. So if you wanted to find the injector, instead of just scrolling all the way through that, use the uh, function that's built into Windows or most browsers. So press Control and F, that brings up this little box here. Start typing injector, and it will highlight and find every instance of that on the whole page. So here you can see we've got injector for reducing agents. So that's for the AdBlue. Click down. We now go and find all of those injectors. So injector cylinder one, two, three, and four. So now we've got that diagram and we didn't have to go scrolling through that whole diagram to look for them. We just use that little feature built into the browser there. Okay, so if you want to open another page, uh, something else you can do, which is built into the browser, rather than kind of um, using one window and navigating around it, you can wait a while for things to load up. So if you just right click and go open in new tab, or if you click the roller down on your mouse for, for most systems, it will open that link in a new tab over here. So something else I want to show you then is the BMW diagrams. Okay, so I'm just gonna select a, a three series. And go into diagrams. And let's look for injectors. So here we are, just started to type in injectors there and we can see there that we've got the diagrams here for 
uh, injectors. So I'm not sure why they've come up under ignition coil pack, fuel injector, powertrain management. It must be something to do with the way that the uh, pages are indexed. Okay, so here's our diagram then for the uh, fuel injectors. Now, what you'll get on a BMW diagram is lots of information about that wire. So this code here where you've got PMVH and PMVL, that will be your uh, injector high and injector low uh, power supplies. So the P kind of stands for a, a pulsed, okay? So it's a, it's a pulsed wire. Um, if we come over here, look, we've got some more codes. So here you've got U5V1, so that's a, a five volt power supply. Anytime you see a U on a BMW diagram, it's likely to be a, a power supply. Uh, and the same down here, M is a ground, and then A, that stands for like an, an analog type of signal, so a varying voltage. And that makes sense because we've got this rail pressure sensor here. So we've got a power, ground, and a signal. Same again over here then, look, we've got the U's for the power supplies. And then these T's here, these are, I suppose that again stands for like a timed signal. That's how it was explained to me. If you're not sure what these are, then you can open a case and say, hey, all data, I want you to send me all of the codes for uh, this diagram here. Okay, so just send them that information along with the chassis number and they will uh, get that information for you. Okay, so here's one of the examples of the requests I made. So at the top, look, it's got a, a list of the components on the diagram. And then here are the, those line codes. So as you can see, look, A, A, we've got signals. Uh, here we've got an M for a ground, T, another signal, and then the U's as the power supply. So um, it, there's lots of information to be had from these diagrams. Okay, so on to the second thing that I really like about this um, system is that it's not limited to wiring diagrams. There's lots of other information on there as well. So let me just show you this search feature here. I actually uh, used this the other day. I was wondering how to get the instrument cluster out of the Volkswagen Passat that I've got. So if I just typed in here uh, dash, again, you might have to be creative with the terms that you use because as you know, there's not one term for a single component in the auto trade as far as I'm aware. So, you know, dash panel, instrument panel, instrument cluster, you know, so, um, and that's nothing new if, if you've been in an auto trade for a while. So we want to scroll down and here you can see, look, service and repair, removing and installing dash panel insert. So before I went wading in there, just ripping the things out, you know, assuming that I could see all of the things that I would need, I went and checked out the wiring diagrams first, so to ensure I didn't break anything. So here it's showing some of the um, tools that you might need for that job. It did say that you needed this kind of puller tool, but it, it wasn't really required. You could just use another hook. In fact, I managed to get my fingers around the side of this one. And it's telling us here, look, you've got to remove these bolts here, and then you basically kind of pull the instrument cluster forward, okay? Um, it will also tell you about any things that you need to uh, remove first. So here, look, we've got carefully unclip the gap cover. So that's the cover that's around the instrument panel, and that then actually links to it. So again, I'm gonna press that mouse wheel down, it's gonna open it in a new tab, and now you can see it's showing us the other thing that needs to be removed first. So all of those instructions are in the one place, and now this is what I'm used to when working in the manufacturer world. Okay, so the third thing that I really love about this is the support. So um, we do have quite a few uh, vehicles available on the list and they're always adding to it from what I'm told. So they gave me a courtesy call the other day just to ask me how I was getting on and just made me aware they were adding some new brands to the list. But the info center is really quite useful. So what you do is go to new request and then you put your details in here. Please do remember to put a chassis number, that way they'll be able to make sure they get the right information for you. Basically, they've got access to the manufacturing data on the other side, and they'll need to put in a chassis number for them to access it. 
You can then put all of the information in here. So look, you've got a vehicle problem. So um, you know, you could say that you've got a certain warning light or a list of fault codes or symptoms and they'll send you everything that they can. So that's like bulletins and any other repair info that might help, recalls and, and things like that. And then here is where you put your information in. So I've used this a couple of times already and they're actually really quite uh, uh, friendly and forgiving because you know some of the things that I've probably gone and requested might have already been on there. However, they still sent the links over, so that was really good. So here you can see where I requested some um, network information for uh, the three series we've got. So there you can see straight away, they just sent over the, the PDF file for that one, okay? So I've got that now to, to use should I need it. And we also requested some uh, similar things for, for the Passat. So you also saw we requested that wiring diagram info earlier. And there, look, they've just linked straight to that piece of information. So if there's something that's not on there, they will do their best to find it for you and send it over. So here you can see they sent me the link for that whole canvas and vehicle network diagram on there that I requested. So yeah, really good. I feel really at home using all data, especially knowing that I can get all of the uh, same information that the dealers get hold of. So one of the challenges you might come across when trying to sign up for all data is it is only available in certain regions. So I've just come over to alldata.com here and you can see here we've got Canada, Europe, USA and Mexico. I will leave some links in the description below that you can check out. Um, you do get like a two week free trial. Um, price wise, um, I wouldn't really like to say because I've had my subscription for probably around a year now and the prices might have changed. So just get in touch with the guys at All Data and they'll be able to advise you best on, on how much that subscription will be. So don't forget, if you want to start to take your diagnostics to the next level, better understand all of this wiring diagram information and the tests that you're gonna be making on the vehicles, make sure you check out the Mechanic Mindset Diagnostic Coach Program, where we're building up a technical training library for the whole vehicle. There's also a free access area that you can try as well. So go and check it out.